Hello all, the practitioner here, bachelor of science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsychologist, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. I agree with the bulk of what Penn and Teller have to say in this particular episode. Actually, biotechnology is one of the um, better improvements of our, uh, si of our current technological civilization, and hopefully uh, one of the ones that will be easiest to spread to the third world, as he pointed out. There are a couple of problems, however, with the current system as to how it's set up. Not in terms of biotechnology, but in terms of the laws that currently surround it. A prominent case that happened in Canada back in 1995 was when a farmer was sued by the, by the large company Monsanto for a, new, uh, for a new strain of wheat that happened to fly over um, the fence. A couple of seeds flew over the fence um, of the compound where it was being uh, grown in a, as a testing batch. Um, you know, frequent conditions. These seeds blew into a neighboring farmer's field. The farmer sold his wheat crop later that year with some of the strains amongst, uh, he was totally organic, but a few of his uh, strains happened to be this Monsanto wheat. Monsanto sued the farmer for having sold this wheat with the, through no fault of his own and didn't know, and Monsanto won. Basically, for an act of God, they won, um, they won this. Another problem, certain companies who are trying to form monopolies on this have actually des uh, designed strains of wheat which will actually become sterile after having done this. They will multiply uh, effectively, uh, you know, and say like, you know, um, uh, you know, quadruple the amount of uh, wheat grown per acre. But the problem is that say after several acres have been harvested, that seed uh, genome cannot be used again, requiring the farmer to buy again from the same company. This is a monopoly form. This is forming a monopoly, um, which is actually uh, which effectively means that a couple of companies can then control um, a couple of companies. There's in uh, in worst case scenario, even one company can control uh, all the genetically modified food, requiring farmers to con constantly come back and buy from them. Now the problem with this is, if we're trying to get food out to the third world. How likely is it that countries that are already so poor that they're, you know, and impoverished that they can't even get technology and food in the first place, you know, because the, the, they're having 25,000 starving a day, are going to be able to afford the high prices from companies trying to form monopolies on this? I agree, you know, um, this is one of the other reasons I have a problem with Walmart and other companies like it. Not because of the fact that I'm anti-capitalism, but because of the fact that I have a problems with monopolies. Adams, the founder of capitalism, uh, back during the 19th century, said a true capitalist system abhors a monopoly. A monopoly permit, prevents competition, which is the whole heart of capitalism in the first place. It prevents true innovation because when a monopoly comes in, it will just simply do anything to quash any alternative uh, ca uh, competition. And, um, and in, in the process, it doesn't see any need to improve its own product or service and the like. Uh, and in the pro um, meaning that in the process, um, other areas of, uh, of industry or people who are their customers can end up getting harmed. They don't. They are uh, they less required to improve better service or to provide better product because of the fact that they don't even have to have any, uh, because of the fact that there is no competition um, for them to fight against. Competition always makes a system better. That's the whole point of evolution. Evolution by adaption. We are now currently the most. Uh, and here's another one. People who, uh, why do you think our species is trying to uh, impede technological progress and us trying to adapt to new issues such as the global warming issue? Why do you think there are still religious groups trying to fight uh, impro uh, you know, uh, improvements in science and the environmental movement doing this? Simple. We are stagnant. We are the monopoly for this planet. We have become the monopoly in terms of controlling resources on this planet, and we have become, or at least we in the West, have become so effing comfortable now that we are not adapting. And the rest of the human race can't even adapt because we're maintaining the, uh, you know, because we're maintaining this monopoly. <laughs> you know, we are a monopoly on the world's uh, distribution of resources. If so facto, we have these problems in the first place. Anyway, uh, that also leads me to the second point I wanted to bring up. In the very ending, Penn uh, says that we need to spread all this technology around in order to help uh, solve the world's uh, starvation problems. Well, I agree with him. We do need to spread the technology around. And that's why we need to be starting to adapt to the, the much larger problem coming up the pike, um, which could be hitting us in 50 years, depletion of resources. If we took a drop in standard, we are already uh, using up resources in terms of non-renewable uh, non metals and the like in an alarming rate. Am I trying to say that we need to gear down on technology? No. What I'm saying is that we need to start, we need to start putting even greater funding um, you know, from national governments and the like into space research. 
we need to start colonizing the asteroid belt, the moon, the asteroid belt, and the rest of the solar system to get enough resources to ship back to Earth so that we will be able to spread the technology around to the point where not only people have an overproduction of food, but an overproduction of power and, uh, you know, of power products, environmentally friendly, what have you, to the point where we have more, we have more standard of living than we know what to do with. But we only have that in the West right now. China's trying to increase. Uh, China's trying to increase its industrial machine. The best, uh, the best uh, case scenarios which they've been talking about in terms of uh, uh, non-renewable resources like copper, iron, nickel, and all that have been suggesting that we have maybe about 50 to 70 years worth of materials. If China increases to that, that's that span of, uh, of technology could drop to 20 years. They're already planning a moon colony. Uh, they're already planning the, the return to mo the moon and the first. Uh, um, uh, permanent moon colony um, around 2017 and shortly thereafter. I agree. On the other hand, I don't think we're spending enough there. I think we need to be starting to seriously spend on interplanetary. We need to be even starting to shave that back by a few years. It's already 2008 now. I'd like to see that colony going up there, say, by 2013 to 2014. I'd like to shave that back by another three, four years. The sooner that we're, the sooner that we're up there, we're not just focusing on the moon. You know, we have to be thinking asteroid belt. We have to be thinking long term now. If we don't consider, again, um, I've already posted the link in the uh, uh, to the blog to the Cosmocracy blog over here. The site, uh, the sources from the Space Studies Institute, NASA, everything else, have all been cited here before. You know, even NASA supporters. Stephen Hawking has also said, if we we either go, uh, we either go off planet or we go bust. It is the human race's necessity to expand. We did that from Africa. We expanded all over the world, but now we are limited in terms of resources as to where we are. If we want to allow for 6 billion people and 80 million a year, as the, uh, as the Nobel Prize winner uh, pointed out in this episode, uh, 80 million a year, if we want to if we want to, um, uh, you know, incorporate for that um, you know, amount of expansion, we need to be able to make sure that we are appropriately giving enough technology for every single one of those 80 million people coming in every year. That means we need a much larger resource base. The sky, the, uh, the the high frontier is awaiting. It's only a matter. Uh, the high frontier is awaiting. It only requires us to take the first step. Get out there and colonize. Anyway, I hope that uh, that pretty much deals with it. Um, I've called Penn and Teller on there uh, on the few on the few uh, mistakes that they've made in a couple of their shows. Um, this one, they had it pretty well. They had it pretty well. Bang on. Toodles.